And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Cetacosaurus, which was a request from Steph via Twitter. So thanks, Steph. And the name means parrot lizard. It was a ceratopsian that lived in the early Cretaceous in what is now Asia. So it's been found in Mongolia, Siberia, China, maybe Thailand. And it's the earliest known ceratopsian. It was first discovered in 1922 during the American Museum of Natural History's third expedition to the Gobi Desert, and they found a nearly complete skull. And it was first described in 1923 by Henry Fairfield Osborne. It's the type genus of the family Cetacosauridae, which Osborne named also in 1923. And it's one of the most well-known dinosaurs, with more than 400 individuals found and lots of complete skeletons and a wide variety of ages. 17 species have been named Cetacosaurus, but only between 9 and 11 are considered valid, and that's the highest number of valid species assigned to a non-avian dinosaur genus. Yeah, that's a lot, especially since more than half of dinosaur genus just have one species. Yeah. So the type species is Cetacosaurus mongoliensis, and the type specimen is of a juvenile. Different species have different skull shapes in terms of length, height, roundness, and what they call bony lumps. <laughs> And species include Mongoliensis, Lugia tunensis, Ni Mongoliensis, Xinjiansis, Sinensis, Melaningensis, Ordosensis, and Sibricus. You passed the tongue twister. Yeah. And that's only eight of them. Osborne also named another specimen Protiguanodon mongoliensis, thinking it was an ancestor of Iguanodon, but it turned out to not be different enough from Cetacosaurus. Osborne said that it had different teeth and snout features, but that wasn't enough. And then in 1958, Yang Zhongjian, a Chinese paleontologist, renamed it to Cetacosaurus protiguanodensis, though nowadays it's usually considered to be Cetacosaurus mongoliensis, and protiguanodon and Cetacosaurus protiguanodensis are considered to be junior synonyms of Cetacosaurus mongoliensis. Oof. Yeah. C.C. Young named a new species, Cetacosaurus osborni, in 1931 after Henry Osborne. It was a partial skull found in Inner Mongolia. Some people, though, think it's a synonym for Cetacosaurus mongoliensis, and others think it's valid. Cetacosaurus sibericus had some what they call bony horns. So they didn't have the same kind of horns as later ceratopsians, but they had things that kind of grew out of their cheeks. But... Some people think that that's convergent evolution. Cetacosaurus mongoliensis skulls are flat on top. I'm just going through some of the differences between the species. Uh, Cetacosaurus sinensis have smaller skulls than other Cetacosaurus species and fewer teeth than Cetacosaurus mongoliensis. Also, the species sinensis cheekbones flare out sideways that look like horns, and the skull is wider than it is long. It also has a smaller, quote-unquote, horn behind the eye, which you also see in... Cetacosaurus sibiricus. Cetacosaurus shinjiansis has a cheek horn that's flattened on the front end. Cetacosaurus melaningensis has the shortest snout and shortest neck frill and a very round skull. Cetacosaurus namongoliensis has a narrow skull compared to other species and is the smallest known species. And Cetacosaurus Lugia tenensis is well known from a study of three specimens in 2007. It had an advanced brain and may have had behavior as complex as Tyrannosaurus, so they may have built nests, cared for their young, and also slept like birds. Cetacosaurus, in general, did not have much ornamentation, meaning not really elaborate horns or neck frills. Not but, like Styracosaurus. <laughs> exactly. But they did, at least some of them, had these bony lumps that grew from their skulls. They had four digits on the hand instead of five, like other ornithischians and ceratopsians, and they had four toes, similar to small ornithischians. They grew up to 6.5 feet, or 2 meters long, and weighed up to 44 pounds, or 20 kilograms. Pretty small. Yeah. Well, they're early. It's almost like dog size. Hmm. <laughs> Their body has scales that were large and small in irregular patterns, and in 2008, a study of two different Cetacosaurus individuals found that its skin was thick, about 40 layers, and may have helped protect it against predators. In 2010, Ford and Martin said Cetacosaurus may have been semi-aquatic, swimming with its tail like a crocodile. And this is based on specimens being found near lakes and them having long chevrons in the tails. They also had bristles on the tail that may have helped form a fin, as well as the position of their nostrils and eyes. Yeah, could be. Well, 
depends who you ask. Yeah, <laughs> there is a little bit of that bias on where you find fossils anyway, because you're more likely to find them by water. So that probably shouldn't count as evidence for them being semi-aquatic. But yeah, well, it does make sense that if you have a good tail for swimming, you might be swimming. Yeah, and if you found a lot of them. So Cetacosaurus had a proportionately large brain and, again, probably complex behaviors. It had a good sense of smell and vision and may have been cathomeral. There's no direct evidence that they cared for their young, but it may have happened. As a juvenile, they were quadrupedal, but then between ages four and six, their legs grew a lot and they became bipedal. They couldn't rotate or reach the ground with their forearms. I didn't know they became bipedal. That's interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. In 2007, Phil Center did a study of Cetacosaurus ne mongoliensis and Cetacosaurus mongoliensis and found its forelimbs were too short to reach the ground. They were 55% as long as the hind limbs, so that made them bipedal. And that also meant that they were too short to dig and bring food to their mouth, which I imagine would be frustrating. (laughs) They had parrot-like beaks and cheek teeth to eat fibrous vegetation, and they had generally tall skulls that were short in length, and in some cases almost round. They were probably a selective browser, and again, they had a beak, and it was probably covered in keratin, and they had self-sharpening teeth to crop and slice vegetation. They couldn't grind or chew their food, so they used gastroliths, probably. Their upper and lower jaws on the skull worked like a single unit without internal joints. It's called akinetic skulls. And they had only one joint in the jaw joint, so it could slide its lower jaws forward and backwards to shear its food. Juvenile Cetacosaurus has not been found with gastrolips, so it's possible that its diet changed with age and they just ate less fibrous food at first. Cetacosaurus gobiensis was found to have lots of gastrolips in its gut, so it may have used its beak to crack nuts and seeds and then use the stones to help digest. Cetacosaurus was a prey animal, One juvenile Cetacosaurus remains have been found in a carnivorous mammal, which is interesting. That's the first example that we know of, of a mammal that ate a dinosaur. Yeah. Score one for the mammals. I think we won in the end. Yeah. (laughs) There was a hundred plus million years there that were a little rough. Yeah, that's (laughs) true. A herd of six Cetacosauruses were found buried by a volcanic mud flow, and it shows that they possibly lived in groups. This herd was of different ages. The young ones had worn teeth, which means that they chewed their own food. And this group probably lived together for protection or to help with finding food or possibly the older ones helped with the nest. And in 2004, 34 juvenile Cetacosaurus skeletons and the skull of an adult were found in the Yixian formation. All the juveniles are under the adult, which may mean the adult was caring for the young, but that seems like a lot of dinosaurs to care for. In 2013, it was pointed out that the adult actually didn't belong with the nest and had been glued onto it. The adult skull was actually of a six-year-old too, and they wouldn't reach maturity until age 10. And again, it's unlikely that one adult would have had so many juveniles to care for at once. Yeah. In 2014, a study of the six-year-old skull found with these juvenile skeletons, they decided that There may have been post-hatching cooperation so that it may have been taking care of the babies. Maybe not necessarily with this particular six-year-old skull, but it could have been in general. There's some modern birds that do this. Hatchlings have been discovered of Cetacosaurus, including one at the American Museum of Natural History that's 4 to 5 inches or 11 to 13 centimeters long, and another one at AMNH that's 1.8 inches or 4.6 centimeters long. And they're both of Cetacosaurus mongoliensis and from Mongolia. I think we have a picture of that one with the magnifying glass over it. Mm -hmm. I like that little guy. It's very cute. Cetacosaurus had quill-like feathers on the tail. One was found with long filaments on its tail. And they're bristle-like structures. And they were found on the tail of a Cetacosaurus that was found in China, probably the Yixian Formation, and it was found in 2002. The quill-like feathers may have been used for display. The Cetacosaurus, where they found the quill-like feathers, isn't assigned to a particular species. It was illegally taken from China and purchased by a German museum and then described while awaiting repatriation. What happened is they had the same fluorescence as scales in ultraviolet light, so they may have been keratinized. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Once Cetacosaurus has been found with a pathology, it's of a Cetacosaurus mongoliensis found in the Yixian Formation, and it had an infection near the mid part of the right fibula. It has a large round pit from lack of blood supply and a large swelling along the lower part of the bone. It's unclear how this happened, though. Jeez. Mm -hmm. It's a little rough. So as I said earlier, Cetacosaurus is an early ceratopsian, and ceratopsia is a group of herbivorous dinosaurs that lived in North America and Asia in the Cretaceous. They had parrot-like beaks and cheek teeth to eat fibrous vegetation, and they were ornithischians. They also had frills that were used for defense or regulating body temperature, attracting mates, or signaling danger. And they probably traveled in herds and could then stampede if threatened. Although these guys probably couldn't do much stampeding if they only weighed 44 pounds. That's true. <laughs> Unless they were being threatened by little mammals that were trying to eat them. <laughs> well, yeah, there were mammals to worry about. 